Hi there, Secure Edge fans. Welcome to another edition of our Whiteboard Wednesday. This week we're going to chat about wireless network design, specifically highlighting 10 tips and tricks you should use to design and configure a high performance wireless LAN. The first tip we'd like to share with you is to design for 5 GHz as primary coverage. The 5 GHz band provides 8 times the capacity of 2.4 GHz and is the least congested of the radio bands with up to 25 channels to use. 2.4 GHz should only be considered as secondary for devices that lack 5 GHz capability since it is limited to just 3 channels to use. Another tip we would suggest is defining your coverage goals. Coverage that is too aggressive can lead to co-channel and even adjacent channel interference or contention. Too conservative of coverage and the result can be poor client performance due to inadequate signal strength and RF deficiencies in areas. A signal strength of NEG 67 dB is the current standard to target in support of low power mobile devices like phones and tablets. We would also recommend placing APs where users are located. In-room placement is best for client performance. Avoid hallways if at all possible unless it is required for voice roaming or location tracking. The idea is to get the APs closest to where the devices are being used. Another tip we would recommend is to tailor your coverage to the facility. Utilize RF obstructions like walls, doors, stairwells, elevator shafts to attenuate the signal between the APs to minimize channel reuse. Consider using proper antennas and orientation for optimal signal propagation. Don't fall victim to thinking that omnidirectional antennas are the solution for all situations. We would recommend fine-tuning your AP power levels. On-site signal measurements of RF propagation through construction materials should be gathered and used to tune the system. Consider your AP density and channel reuse requirements. Adjust the power levels for link symmetry with devices that are in use and always design to include the lowest power device like a mobile phone or a tablet. We would also recommend disabling 2.4 GHz radios if necessary. Disabling some of the 2.4 GHz AP radios can prevent co-channel interference and still provide some additional bandwidth to the wireless LAN. Another tip we would suggest is to design and validate with representative client devices. What I mean by that is spot check the wireless LAN with actual client devices to ensure the design matches your actual client performance. Alternatively, measure with a standard RF site survey adapter and compensate the signal based on actual client device characteristics. Ensure that devices are running the same firmware and or drivers. The same device but with different firmware or drivers can result in differences up to signal levels of 15 or 20 dB. Another tip or trick that we want to make you aware of is that higher AP density requires smaller channel widths. Use 20 MHz instead of 40 MHz in areas where AP density is high. This reduces co-channel and adjacent channel interference and shared channel capacity between clients. It also reduces client contention and improves network stability. Never use 80 or 160 MHz channel widths unless APs are extremely RF isolated and or the AP account is 4 or less. Beware that many manufacturers ship their products with these bonded channel settings as the default when in fact they should rarely ever be used. Another recommended tip or trick is to disable the lower data rates to improve network performance. Removing the legacy data rates of 1 through 11 megabits from the wireless LAN is helpful. These data rates are only used in support of legacy 802.11b clients, which for the most part are no longer in use. Leaving these data rates enabled can negatively impact network performance. Disabling these data rates reduces overhead on the wireless LAN and forces clients to connect to APs closer in proximity to themselves. By connecting to closer APs, sticky client issues are avoided, which is where client devices choose to connect to APs that are too far away to support symmetrical transmit and receive operations. Perform this for both the 2.4 and the 5 GHz radios. Minimizing the number of SSIDs is a tip or trick that we use in the field always. Network overhead increases with each SSID that is broadcast. We recommend no more than four SSIDs in a given RF domain. Make sure your wireless LAN solution supports multiple authentication methods for an SSID so that you can collapse your SSIDs based on mutual supported authentication mechanisms. In some situations, the overhead from all the SSIDs being broadcast consumes so much of the airtime that the remaining bandwidth is too little to support client operations. Finally, we would recommend enabling DFS channels in the 5 GHz spectrum. If your wireless LAN isn't near any airports, military radar installations, or Doppler weather radar sites, you can use the 5 GHz channels 52 through 144 for indoor installations. This can provide up to 13 additional channels for use. Keep in mind that more RF channels is equal to more bandwidth. Also, avoid channel 144 from this range unless you have a very dense AP deployment 
or you can verify that all your devices support this channel. Devices that do not support channel 144 still do exist and using this channel essentially disables their access to Wi-Fi. Okay, that's all I have for this week's Whiteboard Wednesday on wireless design. I hope you're able to make use of these tips and tricks and thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below for us in our comments section. Take care.